What is happening folks? Welcome to Hunting with Tripler. Have any of you actually been inside a hoarder house before? A hoarder garage? Well, I didn't actually go inside the house this time, but he did have a garage sale and I found some crazy, crazy scores. Don't miss this. I collect so many things. Would you like to share this journey with me? I will show you the prizes I got today. All right, folks, today's episode, I actually went to a couple of garage sales over in an area that I haven't been to in a couple of years. And it's not really that far from me. It's actually a really, really nice place to go out for garage sales, but it was on my way to go play basketball. And in this particular instance, I found some incredible scores. Folks, if you like video games, if you like sports cards, if you like nostalgia, if you like things from the mid to late 70s, early 80s and 90s, this episode is going to surprise you. Sit back and enjoy. It's like 5.45, 6 o'clock in the morning and here at the warehouse grabbing my GoPro. I'm gonna go play basketball this morning. Haven't done it in like two years, which is amazing. So getting back out there, I just, ah, oh yeah, I'm so excited. Now in that particular area, I used to go all the time when I'd play basketball, I'd post up like at 6 a.m., start rolling into sales in that area. And I was like, real, I was very successful. In that area, it's a much nicer part of, uh, of LA County. Yeah, it's been two years since I've garage sailed over there, so this is why I'm bringing this and then some ball. And some of you might be wondering, Tripler plays basketball? What, really? Yes, I play some ball. Played since I was a kid, so don't doubt it. At six foot five, I'm not a great center anymore because everyone else has gotten taller and I'm not quite the dribbler that uh, most point guards are. So I'm in that awkward place of being like some hybrid forward center guard. And uh, yeah, for us like tall guys that were centers when we were growing up, but you just never could be a center once you got to like a certain level. That's where I capped off. First yard sale sign, baby. Let's do this. Pass on everything, pass. Keep going, pass, move on, pass, pass, pass. First stop was an absolute bust. Now that I'm kind of in this area, I'm seeing like random garage sale signs popping up everywhere and I'm, I'm getting all excited. The first one I think, or this next one is right two six. Where are we at? Okay, that looked kind of scary. Four, three, four. Good morning. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no problem. All right, we definitely scored here. This, these die cast uh, fighter jets by Witty. He said they were they were new. He said the boxes in some cases weren't great. Um, so that's pretty cool. Picked up this little old school Sony Discman. What are the chances that battery bay is clean? Eh, it's actually not too bad. And then this. That guys is probably a thirty. $40 putter, might be more than that, but then he threw in those cars as well. I mean, definitely a solid pickup. I spent 55 for all of that. Good morning. Looking for anything in particular? Old toys. Old toys. Video games. I have a video game, sports like PlayStation 2. Yeah, I like all that. What kind of old toys? Oh boy. I mean, 80s, 90s stuff I like. Um, oh, they're there. Oh, you're exactly. Old, 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 old
these are like McDonald's things. Okay, I'll take a look at those. Right, you put yeah. pop it in, yeah, that thing's awesome. My kids get a kick out of that. Huh. It's a Sega game, but I'm still looking. Okay. I know I have them, I just, I'm in the process of moving. Oh, okay. So, are they all McDonald's? No, they're all. Yeah, I was gonna say, some of them look. to get out of there. Sorry, bud. looking for his old Sega Genesis with his games. I'm grabbing some coffee and uh, yeah, I'm like very excited about the possibility. I just went to get a little bit of cash and the guy wanted 20 bucks for everything and I only had 15 in my wallet and I was not gonna haggle with him. I said, I'll be right back. So I'm coming back. He couldn't find a Sega Genesis. I'm kind of willing to wait around a little bit because I know there are just some phenomenal Sega Genesis titles out there that I'm willing to kind of just say, yeah, you know what, I'll wait. I, I, I mean, I don't really need to go to 50 more garage sales, I just don't. Want me to help you? No, I got it. Okay, all right. right here. If I can see. Here, I got a light. I got to throw that right in there. Yeah. Okay, very cool. Yeah, they do. All right, I'll bring all this up here. Man, I I would I, I feel like I would love to come and just like do a private walkthrough of your place you know, if you're willing to sell. You know what's funny? Yeah. Um, a lot of the stuff I've never even gone through yet. Oh, yeah, I gotcha. Relatives passed away and they just dump all their stuff and they never had a chance to go through. Because I they, gotcha. They, like five relatives died in one uh, year. Yeah. And my mean, mom just passed away. She, I live with my mom. She just passed away two weeks ago. I'm really sorry, man. I'm I, sorry. I appreciate that. I'm really sorry. Yeah, that's that's tough. We knew it was coming. Yeah. If you're interested, I mean, genuinely, this is kind of what I do. I, I love kind of going through reliving the past for me is a is kind of a big deal. So those guys who go out and oh, oh yeah, yeah. of what, course. What's the name of that show? Pick uh Pickers. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great show. So what do you want for all if I just said what do you want for all of this? That was just, that was nuts. 
1973 Topps basketball. A huge stack of them right here. Nothing like crazy. There is a Jerry West in there. I mean, I'm just like, I'm really happy, really happy. And of course, we're gonna go through all this in detail, but just to know that these kinds of scores are still out there, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very excited. All right, we're back in the warehouse, and there were some really fantastic, I mean, out of this world type pickups that we've, we've got to review up close. But just for some of you who are curious and wondering whether or not I went actually to play basketball or if that was just sort of a ruse, here, just a quick little snippet. Everybody get up, it's time to slam now. We got the real jam going down. Welcome to the Space Jam. So me going over to this area to go outsourcing was actually a, a treat for me. And there was no competition. There was nobody out there. And the second pickup where I had gotten really the best scores of the day, I ended up going back there, and I guess we'll refer to that as the hoarder house. Most of the stuff was from like the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and then it like skipped 20 years. So I'm gonna walk you guys through some of the best finds from it, and it just, I'm telling you, there was just some stuff that he pulled out that is, really mind-blowing. So let's review our Saturday pickups. We had two stops in the day and we'll start at the first one. All right, so that first stop, you guys saw some footage where I worked out a deal to buy these die-cast models. These were actually kind of a throw-in because they were inside of the bin. These die-cast, their auto art is the brand and um, they're actually just, they're gorgeous cars. And there's a little bit of wear, some things it looks like I might have to repair with some super glue. I hope that doesn't affect the value. You know, having paid $55 for everything you see at this first garage sale, I'd say I did exceptionally well. Now this one's gonna come off as a massive surprise to you guys. This is a vintage Sony Discman. It actually has the leather pouch to it, which is coming apart at the seams, and it has the original AC adapter. This thing, if it was working, which it unfortunately doesn't, it does power on, it does spin the disc, but it just won't stay on, which I, I couldn't even tell you what the situation is there. If it was working, it's over $125. I think it, as parts, it's still probably worth 50 bucks. So it's got all the stuff you would want with it. That being said, I mean, this right here, this broken tech, almost pays for the entire lot. I found a copy of Forrest Gump Sealed, and this is actually, used to be my favorite movie of all time as like a teenager, which is really weird. Easy find, easy pickup, easy sale. And really, these were the best pickups. These were the die-cast uh, Witty Wings is the brand, and Witty Wings has this F18. I guess technically they're new, but they're open box. Most of the time when a collector buys these, they either pull it out and display it on a shelf. I don't think anyone actually pulls them out to play with them. So I would say this is new open box, but at the same time, I really have to review and make sure there isn't any broken parts. This is the F18 Eagle, and the box on this one, unfortunately, is a little rough. This is the F18. 14B Tomcat. I would imagine this might be one of the more sought after ones. Just, I mean, you can see the back. Gotta love those skull and bones. And the last item at this sale was this sweet putter. Tailor made Rosa. Uh, this is actually the Monza Spider. I don't even know all of these details. I've never owned a putter like this, but it also has the super stroke grip on it. It's a pretty sought after putter. This goes for over a hundred bucks and I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. It's got a bit of wear, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal. I'm going to sell this one for good money. You look at the bottom here and say to yourself, when you spend 50 bucks and you make that much money, you can almost say, the day is done, I'm happy, I can go home. And that's sometimes how I feel. I just wanna get lucky and move on. Now, garage sale two, you saw some of the footage and there were some great finds. So I'm gonna try and not go through every single little item because I did pick up a lot of stuff. I'm gonna focus on just the best things. I did get a few Hot Wheels here, nothing crazy. The Batman classic TV series Batmobile, that's in there. Originally, this game sold for $1.99. This one right now, new, is actually going for great money. It's sealed. Computer games, if you find old computer games, especially if they're sealed, there is a massive market out there for sealed computer games, even ones that are sort of obscure. I'd never heard of this game. I don't know if any of you had, but this one goes for awesome money. And check out those graphics. <laughs> Look at those. A couple of vintage models in there as well. A game called Storm Over Arnhem. Vintage fishing game. Unfortunately, the poles are not in here, but I think all of you have seen something like this. 
This one he said was actually the original. I don't know if that's true or not. There's actually not even a brand on it. Made in Taiwan, no fishing poles, but it does remind me of some great years trying to get that elusive blue fish. When I mentioned he had skipped an entire generation of video games, they didn't miss that late 70s, mid 70s telegames. This is Sears version of Hockey Pong. I think this is really, really fantastic. Um, I'll clean it up as best as I can, but I think this item right here is selling for 100 bucks or more. I think with the actual box, maybe it's worth a little bit more than that, but just such an awesome retro find. I got an old Matchbox collector's case. Um, this is from 1966. This is called Melody Bear. Even if it wasn't new, this particular thing sells for about 20 bucks. I did get a few video games, one that's sealed, and I also got some PS2 controllers. I got Caesar's Palace 2000, which I think this goes sealed for like $20, and I think the game unsealed doesn't even sell for a dollar. Ultimate Ninja 2, Naruto I just couldn't pass this one up. This was Tim Duncan on the cover, Backyard NBA Basketball. I actually want to play it. I've got to check this one out. But uh, anyway, I imagine this one's probably under $10 as well. But then we had Dragon Quest VIII. It's in there. It's complete. It's got the uh, Final Fantasy, I think, 12 or Final Fantasy 12 demo disc. So all of this probably sells for, I think, 35 or 40, somewhere in there. So this was solid too. And this is where I'm just gonna kind of scan it, but these are all like really small, really unique toys all the way from the 70s into the late 90s. I've gotta spend quite a bit of time looking through this, but there could be some really great money when you're lotting together some of these small, little, tiny toys, especially from the era of 70s, 80s, 90s. And last, guys, really what made this deal so phenomenal were the cards. I mean, he just pulled out, not like 80s, of course, 1986 Fleer would have been amazing. He did say he had old basketball cards, and I was thinking to myself, well, that's cool. I was thinking maybe it's gonna be like 90s. No, he pulls out 1971-72 tops, and not a complete set by any means, but he pulls out some amazing names, and he's like, I don't know, five bucks for the whole thing? I was not going to argue. Let's check this out. We're gonna start with the football here. I'm just gonna skim through these. Um, if there's a card in here that kind of stands out, one that you know of, or one that you need for your collection, look at that. Let me know, folks. If anyone is curious about the condition, the condition, I would say some of the best cards might be a seven, and the worst cards might be like a three. I'm gonna doubt that there's anything better than an eight. There might be a couple in here that are really good, but I would say for the most part, these are all gonna be in that uh, five, six, seven range. All right, I'm gonna skip right to the basketball and then we'll end with some of what I think are the best cards. So he had a pretty solid collection of basketball cards here. Pat Riley, folks, look at that. Jerry West, look at that. All right, folks, and these would probably end up being the best cards from the lot. Got a John Unitas, an OJ Simpson rookie card, Mark Schottenheimer, ABA championship. I'm not sure why that was in there. Look at that. We have a Wilt Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Walt Bellamy. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about those. And check that out, Carl Yastrzemski, just hanging out, no big deal. And then we had Julius Irving card, a Wilt Chamberlain card. 
This is a Babe Ruth Twilight Years. I just thought that was super cool. A checklist. I don't know why I have a John Mackey. I got an Ernie Banks. I thought that was awesome. A Hank Aaron. Jerry West. Not sure about that card. Another Jerry West card. Larry Brown. Wow. Young. And then we had another Jerry West here. And a Julius Irving. And that was today's episode, folks. And I'll tell you right now, I've already been back to the hoarder house slash garage two other times, and I'm probably going one more time. Each time I go, he's basically just throwing this stuff away and he's saying I can have it. Now, I'm still throwing him some money, but the prices and the uniqueness of some of the stuff I'm getting, it's just too good to pass up. So I keep going back. And can I get a few thumbs up for my jump shot? All right, folks, it's profit and loss time and things took a terrible turn this week. Let's do this. Last week, we left off with a profit of $13,287. And I was really concerned about it last week. We'll wait till the end of this. Our cost this week, $6,000. $754 and a lot of that though went to Julio so I spent about $2,000 with Julio again and I squared him up for the Mario game so all of those costs are now out the door but they did come off of our profit margin and right now our costs are looking really really high for the week and with rent included in that number being over $6,000 yeah it's it's a lot it's a lot. We didn't have an Amazon payment this week and I won't be getting another YouTube payment for quite a while. Now my eBay sales right here, over $3,000, exactly $3,119. It's just not cutting it. It's not anywhere near what we needed to be. I needed to be at $4,500 or more per week to hit our goal and this is still just not reflecting what I was expecting in terms of sales this time of year. That means our profit for the week is actually negative $3,635. We are going the opposite direction guys so I'm very nervous. That brings our grand total of profit to $9,652, and at this point, I'm just not sure if we're gonna hit that $60,000 goal. Quite honestly, I was expecting a lot of different sales to hit, and they're just not hitting. 60,000 in profit, it's tough. Now, we've spent a lot of money. We've spent a lot of money on inventory, so inventory is really high right now. It's just, the sales just, they're not matching it. But anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. We've got a lot of great content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you won't miss any of the good stuff coming up. I hope your finds this weekend are amazing, and I hope your sales are just as good. Stay safe out there, and of course, I will see you next time. Take care, guys.